Let's try to calculate the electron configuration of chromium. This is going to be very normal until we get to the very end when we're going to have a 4s2, 3d4 electron configuration, which is going to have to self-shift itself around. It's one of the exceptions to the order of filling. What I mean is that up until you get to calcium, it's going to be your standard electron configuration. 1s2 for the first row, 2s2, 2p6 for the second row. I'm going to start writing this out for us. 1s2 for the first row, first two electrons. 2s2, 2p6 for the next eight electrons from the second row of the periodic table. The third row here has 3s2 and 3p6 in that order. Check. And we have to get to here. So we go down to our fourth row. This is 4s and we're going to fill both of those electrons, 4s2. And then by the time we get to the 3d block, Please remember that right after 4s2 comes 3d. It is 10 electrons wide, so it can hold up to 10 electrons. 10 elements wide holds 10 electrons. One, two, three, we are four deep into that. So we write 3d4. Your job as a student is to remember that d4s and d9s in the ground state electron configurations will self-shift themselves around. You're going to borrow one electron from the 4s in this case, the s that was directly before the d, and you're going to move it into the d shell. This is an exception to the Aufbau principle where you go from the bottom up. The reasoning is that perfectly empty or full orbitals are absolutely the best. The octet rule from like grade 9 probably taught you that. But perfectly half-filled subshells are also ideal. So a D subshell, which can hold up to 10 electrons, has some extra stability just for having five electrons in it. That's exactly half. And an S subshell is somewhat stable by having half of its capacity too. Half of that is one electron in it. So rather than having a full S and an, a one short of halfway D subshell, we prefer to energetically move one electron from here up to here, have two perfectly half filled subshells, and it is slightly more stable for having made that movement. That means that the shorthand, if we go back to the previous noble gas, is argon. And instead of it being 4s2, 3d4, you have to write down that it is 4s1, 3d5. Now, molybdenum's going to do this as well, 5s1, 4d5. Tungsten will do this, uh, 6s, 6s1. You're still going to have your 4f14 if you get that far in the periodic table and your 5d5. It's going to go on like that. Copper, silver, and gold do the same thing and d9 turns to d10. These are the exceptions to the Aufbau principle. I'm going to have to accept them. Hey, best of luck.